Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Some updates have been provided this week regarding some of the actions South Africa is taking to address the electricity crisis. Terence Kruma joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The bad news is that the immediate prognosis remains bleak. Yes, you know, we've had daily load shedding the whole of 2023 except for two days and uh, the prognosis for winter remains bleak. As we know, Eskom put out a warning of possible stage eight. We haven't reached those levels yet. But in Parliament this week, uh, President Sir Ramaphosa had his budget vote and he reaffirmed the, the dire situation, saying winter is going to be very difficult, and then offered something of uh, insight into some of the respite that we might get, as we've heard from the electricity ministers and others towards the end of the year, as sort of Kuburg is back online with its one unit. The three Kusila units begin operating at a, a lower rating uh, than, you know, than its nameplate because it's going to need these temporary stacks. And then we so should start getting uh, signs of maybe Kusila, one of the other Kusila units coming in. And a few of the uh, embedded generation projects also starting to produce. So the immediate few months from now until August really looks going to be difficult and on top of it you know we see the fragility of the distribution networks coming through um, in many many suburbs and townships and uh, around the country where we, you don't come back after load shedding and that's because of the sort of chronic lack of uh, investment maintenance skills capacity at municipal levels at the distribution level as well as at uh, Eskom distribution so I think we must prepare still for a difficult period ahead. We could also be on the cusp of taking decisions that may be easy to sell in the short term, but potentially extremely costly. Yes, I think that's really the power ship decision. And more and more that's coming to the fore. You know that we, the power ships won a big chunk of the risk mitigation RPP program that was put out in 2020-2021. Uh, in and since then, nothing's happened because of court cases, allegations of corruptions, concern around the pricing methodology. But really, the main thing is that uh, car power ship that won those 1,000, that 1,200 megawatts that they could inject into the uh, to the grid through power ships hasn't got the environmental authorizations, and there's still a number of problems uh, at a number of ports. So they've got potential to get mooring rights there but not the environmental authorizations, which remain important. But uh, the electricity minister, Minister Ramakhorpa this week, indicated that uh, there, is, there are moves still to procure uh, power ship capacity. It's not clear whether it's a negotiation under the risk mitigation program and trying to shorten that term to between five and 10 years, as uh, Rudy Dix of the presidency said, or whether it's going to be a new procurement probably through the emergency procurement uh, that, that is currently before NERSA in terms of getting concurrence uh, that Eskom will run, that the minister is indicating would be around a five year time frame. So it's not really clear, but what is clear is power ships are very much on the agenda. And if it is for 20 years and we are seeing the activity that we are around distributed generation, procurement of renewable energy, we're going to have power ships that are contracted to supply basically all day <laughs> at really, really high uh, costs. And it's going to really be hit us in the pocket. Obviously, immediately, South Africans just want solutions. But we have to look at what it's going to mean for the system and whether it's relevant over a 20-year horizon. It doesn't look like it will be relevant. Uh, the Presidential Climate Commission says if we do have gas in the system, which is what this would be, it would be to really supplement and to fill the gaps, not to run almost as um, base load type uh, output, uh, sort of from five in the morning till seven or nine at night. And that's really how it was contracted under the, the risk mitigation program. So I think all eyes are going to be on this because it's potential for huge expense, uh, let alone the sort of environmental objections. There is some positive news on the distributor generation front. Yes, I think uh, both Operation Vuland Lela brought out its report as well as the, the president in his budget vote, noting you know, the change to Schedule 2 of the Electricity Regulation Act, allowing uh, companies to build uh, power plants now of any size. Initially it was capped at 
100 megawatts to enter the grid and to wheel electricity uh, through that grid without requiring our license has been a major, it's a small reform in terms of what it meant in terms of paperwork and it had been called for for many years but it has had a major impact and it's a sort of reform we should be looking to do more and more of where it's, it's not a major legislative or regulatory change but it really has a big impact and we see now that the pipeline has grown to uh, 10 gigawatts or 10,000 megawatts uh, which if it all goes ahead, which it probably won't, it's like a 200 billion rand investment, all coming from private balance sheets, not from the state. And it comes at a time when these wind and solar, which they mostly are, some of them with battery storage, uh, really that can be built quite rapidly. And we can see, uh, you know, some of the, the, the tracking that's being done is that we're going to start seeing some of these projects entering the system before the end of this year. Um, about one, over 1,000 megawatts of that, and then a big jump potentially next year, over 3,000 megawatts coming in. Uh, and we need to sustain that momentum because as the PCC showed this, uh, this week, we need really 8,000 uh, megawatts a year over the next few years to really start closing the gap from a supply perspective that's being left by very poor operating coal plants and the gap that's going to emerge as we start decommissioning the coal plants, even if there's a slight schedule shift, we need to decommission those because it's going to be too costly really to continue operating those. So it's not the best uh, solution to keep operating these coal plants beyond their dead stop date for, for very long. And the, uh, the other gap that we hope will emerge is growth. Uh, eventually we need to start growing as an economy. We, we are flatlining at the moment, but we need to start catering for growth. So really we need to keep sustaining this, uh, this trajectory around the embedded generation investment and the appetite that's, that's been shown, as well as the other procurement programs that need to start coming through. Uh, so it's a, it's, it is a positive development, as you say. Equally uplifting are recent developments within ESCOM transmission to begin picking up the pace of grid investment. That's correct. You know, I mentioned the amount of renewables we know need to get in, as the PCC says, around eight gigawatts a year. You know, with, but without grid capacity, we're not going to be able to do that. And that's become a major constraint on adding re new renewables into the system. There is still grid capacity, but it's not necessarily in the best renewables acreage in the country. So we do need to have a spatial dimension initially and use what grid capacity is available. And that is also a recommendation that comes out of the PCC this week. But it's important to really get this grid uh, investment going. And we know that we've been really lethargic on that. Eskom as a vertically integrated utility, a lot of money has been thrown towards the generation business. That's also the most troubled, problematic child within the, the business. So therefore, more and more attention, resources and money goes, goes towards that. And we're seeing that in a lack of investment in the grid, which is really now biting, as we saw with Bid Windows 6, where none of the wind projects could uh, be selected as be in the situation we are at, are at the moment. But I think this is all about speed and getting acceleration uh, of the grid rollout. And just on the power line dimension, we know there's a lot of substations that we also need, but they're wanting to really raise the pace to 1,500 kilometers a year. That's, you know, that's what we need in terms of the TDP because we're already behind uh, in terms of the transmission development plan, in terms of getting that 14,000 kilometers of line by 2032. So we need to, to pick up the pace because we didn't do, in, in terms of the first year of that, we didn't do it at that pace. So now 1,500 kilometers a year is what we need. And the EPC model is seen as key to accelerating the pace. But I think on the sides, this is not really an Eskom driven thing, but there's a view that we might need to also look at public private partnerships in the space, much like we did with the renewables program uh, over the last uh, decade and a bit. And really, to, that would be a situation where you concession a line. So that would be a different level. But at least Eskom is saying they're going to default towards EPC to really get things going. They will use their old procurement methods for certain lines and certain substations, but on the whole, this is going to be their, their main model, and I think it's an important shift. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.
Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.